Before India's election results were out, there were many who feared that post result the very fabric of the country would change. We'll have an India we won't even recognize. Now that was just scaremongering. Rest easy. We have the same old India ambling along. But why no change? Before we browse why India isn't changing, a quick run through the first week of the new government or how things have remained the same. In fact, two days before the new government was sworn in, there was an incident in Chhattisgarh which exposed our socio-religious fault lines. Two men from Uttar Pradesh were transporting cattle. Gudu Khan and Chand Mia Khan are found murdered, apparently by vigilantes. Mob lynching has become too commonplace in modern India. With that backdrop, let's get into the first week of the third Narendra Modi government that was sworn in on June 9. June 9, the same day that the new government takes over, militants open fire on a bus full of pilgrims in Riyasi district Jammu, killing 9 and injuring 33. Jammu and Kashmir continues to engage our security forces as it has done for decades. June 10, there is firing at the advanced security convoy of the Manipur chief minister. One year and one month later, Manipur continues to simmer. Same day, June 10, the Satnami community sets a fire the superintendent of police's office in Baloda Bazar district, Chhattisgarh. They are offended over the desecration of one of their religious structures. Religion is a genie that we've let out of the bottle. Will we ever be able to put it back? June 11, Canada superstar Darshan Tugdiba is arrested in a murder case, accused of killing a fan of all people. Rich and famous in India continue to believe they can get away with murder. June 12, religion again. Can a 10-year-old girl go on a pilgrimage to the Sabarimala temple? No, says the Kerala High Court. Same day, June 12, Chandra Babu Naidu takes over as the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh. He has to splash that across newspaper front pages across multiple states, spending millions on advertising. Same day, June 12, the vast majority of the 49 people killed in the Kuwait apartment fire are Indian workers. We are born here, we find work abroad. Don't ask why other nationalities don't come here to work. June 13, a doctor in Malad, Mumbai, finds a severed finger in an ice cream he ordered online. The law will take its course, its long course. Same day, June 13, the National Testing Agency cancels the score sheets of 1,563 candidates as the NEET exam controversy snowballs. The other candidates will not order ice creams to celebrate. You know why. Same day, June 13, the CBI conducts searches in the Odisha postal scam, which is about forgery in the postal service examination. Of course, we can't let a week pass without some scam. June 14, Gujarat police arrest five persons connected to a needs center in Godhra on the charge of helping students cheat in the exam. Apologies, Balganga the Tilak, but examination cheating is among our new birthrights. June 15, eight Naxalites and a soldier are killed in an encounter in Narayanpur district, Chhattisgarh. Of course, no one would think this is the last encounter with Naxalites. So by and large, we've been able to preserve our old India, no matter the periodical changes in government. But why is that? Why doesn't a new government bring in some palpable, significant change that ordinary citizens can touch and feel? A big reason is that only the government changes, not the systems or the government institutions. Come to think of it, only our politicians are at least moderately accountable. We can change them every five years. But our bureaucracy can continue in slow motion, corrupt mode, and government employees are immovable, whether they are inefficient, incompetent, or corrupt. Our law courts are virtually buried in pending cases, so we can't expect speedier justice anytime soon. The government informed the Lok Sabha in December 2023 that the 25 high courts have more than 6 million pending cases and the subordinate courts have more than 44 million pending cases. Add the pending cases in the Supreme Court and we have more than 50 million pending cases across the country. And then there are we the citizens who are happy to bribe happy to throw garbage everywhere and happy to jump the queue. So that's why changing some politicians every few years isn't bringing the kind of change that millions of voters expect. Will Modi 3.0 bring change? 
Would Rahul 1.0 have brought change? The answer has a lot to do with how government systems and machinery can be made more efficient, citizen friendly and more respectful to the common man. If not, our aspirations will lie outside of the country. We will migrate, hold our green cards close to our chest and from some cricket stadium in New York, we will sing Sare Jahan Se Acha Hindustan Hamara and shout Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Let me leave you with two quotes that will reassure us that there is no threat to our national character or the promises we hear. Prime Minister committed to doubling farmers' income, Shivraj Singh Chauhan. My God is poor people of India, the people of Wayanad, Rahul Gandhi. Heard these before? Rest easy, we'll hear them again.